guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are actually going to be making another gecko project. Last week we made a raptor gecko and I just, I guess I'm stuck on geckos for a little bit so I'm going to be making another gecko project but today we are going to be making kind of a flying dragon type gecko. And the gecko that I want to base this off of is going to be a crested gecko. Anyways, let's get started. So with this piece, we're not actually going to have a ton of clay pieces. We're mainly going to have the clay head and a few claws for each like little wing foot that I'm going to make. So I'm going to start getting the basic shape down for my head. So I have my tin foil, I'm going to get it covered in clay, blend everything together, and just kind of mess around with the shape until I like how it looks. Remember, we're going for kind of a gecko theme, but with this one, I think I'm going to leave it a little looser than when I did our gecko raptor. For the glass eyes, I picked out these really pretty gray ones. I'm going for a very pale, kind of like sherberty color and I figured keeping the eyes kind of subtle would work too. So they're a little dark but not too dark. Now I've been meaning to make my own glass eyes and these ones I haven't made. These are from NYX Creations on Etsy but I do have it planned to print them off and make my own soon. I just kind of put that project on hold for a little bit. But hopefully soon I'll have my own custom glass eyes that I can use for my creatures. For the eyelids with this, I didn't add a ton of clay, mainly because I want them to look a little bit more gecko-y, so I want the eyes to be a little bit wider and fuller, so I didn't cover up a lot of the eye with my clay for the eyelids. And then once I'm done with the eyes, I'm going to start adjusting the shape of the head and work on the crest that I want on the head. So I want the crest to kind of go over the eye and a little bit on the jawline. So I'm going to add a little bit more clay there, blend it into the face, kind of pinch it a little bit to make it stand up, and then I'm going to use my tools to break it up and make it look a little scaly. After that, I'm going to kind of adjust the shape of the head a little bit more. I've been just not 100% sure on how I wanted the head to look, so I keep kind of messing with it. And then I'm going to add the nose and the mouth. So for the nose, I'm just going to use a dotting tool and kind of dig in and mark that out where the nostrils are. And then for the mouth, I'm going to roughly sketch out where the opening will be and then use my tools to just kind of refine that line. Lastly, I'm going to take another dotting tool and I'm going to add a texture to the face. So I'm just going to kind of go over certain sections, mainly the top of the head and just a little bit on the sides. And then once I'm happy with how our clay head looks, I'm going to put it in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now for the claws, what I could have done, which I've done a lot lately, is use my resin mold that I have. But I wanted the claws to be a little bit like shorter, not so sharp looking, and I also wanted to add kind of a chubby toe to it. So I decided to just make them out of clay real quick. So started out with a simple little wire, added a ball of clay to the end of it, shaped it a bit, added the claw, just kind of messed around with it. I left it really simple. And then each foot is going to only have two claws and we're going to have four, so I need to make eight. And then once I have all eight of my claws done, I'm going to bake these in the oven as well for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once we have all of our clay done baking and it's cool to touch, we can start on the painting. 
And then with painting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match the fabric that I'm going to use as close as possible. And I'm going to primer all my clay pieces with that color. So we're going with kind of a minty sherbet color. And again, I'm just going to paint everything and get that basic color down before we can add any details. After that, I'm going to take a darker green and just kind of add a little bit of decoration to it. So this is darker, but it's also kind of a brighter green. So I'm going to use it to kind of make parts of the face stand out. I'm really not going to use it for shadowing. I'll end up using more of a gray color for that. So I'm mainly going over the crests with this to help them stand out a little bit more. I'm also going to take more of a yellowy green and I can go over that a little bit more and add a brighter highlight to our section. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with the different greens of the face, kind of add some shadows here and there, and there really isn't too much of detail that I need to add to this face. Other than that, I'm just going to let everything dry and then I'm going to clean up our glass eyes. And then for our claws, those aren't super detailed either. I'm going to use the same darker and brighter greens to kind of highlight the tips of them. And then I'm just going to go over the claws with a different shade of green to separate the two, just to make the claws stand out from the toes. Okay, so now that we're done painting our clay pieces, let's get started on the sewing. So this is the pattern that I have and it is really long, plus there's a lot of fabric crests that I want to add going along the sides of the body. So we actually have a lot of sewing for this even though it's pretty simple. So the first thing that I'm going to sew are going to be the crests. But before we start sewing, I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the fabric. So I have some watered down paint in a squirt bottle and I'm just going to lightly go over the fabric to add little polka dots here and there. And because we're not getting the fabric super wet, this shouldn't take too long to dry. And then once our fabric is done drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two sections for each crest we're going to pin them together and we're going to sew along the lines so i've got a lot of little ripples and stuff and i tried to keep it as simple as possible but i still wanted it to have this cool texture so these took quite a while to sew plus we have uh two four six, eight of those as well just like the claws but these took a lot longer than the claws And then we have the wings and we also have some decorative pieces for the tail. So all of these are going to get pinned together too and we're going to sew along the lines, flip them right side out, and then I'm going to use my sewing machine to add some extra decoration and kind of break up the webbing of the wings in the different sections to make it look just a little bit more put together. And then I'm going to be making my wings poseable, so I have a pretty simple wire frame set up. I'm then going to take the toes that we have and the wires that are sticking out at the back of those. I'm going to wrap them together to add them to the wire frames for the wings. 
Then I'm just going to take the fabric for the wings. I'm going to run it over the wire frame. We can glue the fabric around the bases of our toes and then we can start stuffing and closing up the body of the wing. So because we had all that sewing, the webbing portion won't get stuffed, just more of the arm portion of the wing. And then to decorate all of these pieces, I have this really pretty pearlescent fake leather and I'm going to cut it into some feather shapes that we can add to the wings and the little sails that are going to go on the tail. So it took quite a while to cut all these out, but we're just going to layer these in place and sew them on both sides of the wings and the little sail pieces. That way it looks the same on both sides. With the sewing for this, I'm not really focused on like the look of my stitches, mainly because I'm going to cover these up. So I actually have a furry fabric that is the same color as the rest of the like soft minky fabric that we're using for the body. And I'm just going to cut some sections to cover up that seam and kind of blend it together. Make it look like smaller feathers on top of the larger feathers. Okay, so the next thing is just a little bit of sewing for the fabric for the body. Mainly because I didn't have fabric long enough to make it one consecutive piece, so I had to break up where the neck meets the body. So I'm just going to sew these pieces together, and then we're going to start putting our dragon together. So I'm going to start with our clay head, and I have a really long piece of wire, and I've got it doubled up so that it's a little bit stronger and I'm gonna add it to the back of the head. So I'm just gonna glue this in place, and then I'm gonna take the fabric for the body and start gluing it around the base of the head. So I'm gonna let our glue dry a little bit, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing down the sides of the body and stuffing and closing everything up. So this part's going to take a little longer than normal, mainly because while I'm sewing, I'm going to take those decorative frills that we made, and I'm going to be sewing them in place as well on each side of the body. And to make the body even and not twist, because sometimes when you make a snake body, the fabric likes to twist, I kind of go back and forth between the two sides to try and keep it even. So I'm going to sew the neck and then once I get the neck sewn and stuff, I'm going to stop and we're going to add our first set of wings. So I'm going to take the wire frames of the wings and I'm going to take a thinner gauge wire and I'm going to wrap them in place on the wire that's for the spine of our creature. So I'm going to get that in place and then we can sew the wings in place too. So I'm just going to continue going down the side of the body and sew those in place like we were with the frills. And then I'm just going to keep sewing, stuffing, sewing, stuffing, um, do the same thing with the other set of wings. Once we get to where those are going to go, I'm going to add those to the wireframe and sew them. And then as we're going down the tail, I'm going to add those other like sail type pieces to the sides. And then once we get to the end, we're also going to add the end piece. Now on the tail part, I guess I was tired and just completely forgot about them, but I had some extra frills that I still needed to sew, and instead of sewing them while I was sewing the tail, I completely forgot. So I gotta sew those in place on top, so I'm, it's not a big deal, it's just a little bit more sewing to work with. 
So I'm gonna get those last frills in place and then the last bit of detail that I want to do is I want to go over the body with my fabric markers and just add that darker green that we added to the clay pieces throughout the body to kind of make everything just kind of more cohesive because it, the clay pieces stand out a little too much without that color in the rest of the body. Okay guys, and here is our crested flying gecko dragon. I still need to think of a name by the time I put this video out, so I'll probably come up with something a little bit more creative. I don't know, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, really long. And I just love the wings. I did this fabric on our one fairy dragon that we recently did, but I did the entire wing out of it, and it was just a little bit of a pain to work with on such large scales. But just making a little accent like this with the feathers worked really well. And I think I'm going to do it a little bit more with uh, this type of material. But yeah, I'm going to have our long boy in my shop. So uh, check the links down below if you want to give him a home. I also have a bunch of other art dolls in my shop right now. So you can check that out. See if there's anything else you want to get. Also, I've been drawing a lot recently on my tablet, so I have some artwork that I kind of did based off of this creature and a bunch of others. I've been trying to work a little bit more on my red bubble, so if you want to check that out, I'll also have that linked as well. And then if you're curious on all the other links that I have down there, those are art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're interested in making your own or you just want to see a little bit more of what I like to use, you can check those out as well. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, they are affiliated, so it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.